Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another session of Ask an ECE. Uh, I'm Miss Karen and I'm live here from the Early On Center. So we get some questions sometimes about how uh, you can encourage independence in your little ones. So I thought that I would uh, start off today by talking about some tips and some benefits and some things you can do uh, to encourage this within your family. So first off, we have some families that uh, come in and they ask, how can I get my little one to help me around the house? You know, um, my older kids tend to be helping around, but I can't seem to get my little ones to help out. So before we get into that, let's first talk about why there are benefits into encouraging independence in your children within your children at such a young age. So there's many different benefits to this. One of them is that uh, some of the benefits are that they will gain confidence. So I'm just going to point my um, phone this way. So some of the benefits of encouraging independence in your children is that they will gain confidence, they'll learn new skills, they'll develop qualities for lifelong learning, as well as they'll be learning self-discipline and self-trust within themselves, as well as they'll be learning things such as patience and of course confidence in themselves. So some people may ask, some families may ask, at what age can I start? Is my little one too small to um, start learning about independence or um, start helping out within the family? And my answer would be no. You can start as um, early as when they are toddlers. A lot of our families that come in, of course, are uh, from infant to six years old. So of course, once they're toddlers, they can grasp a little bit of uh, trying to help mommy or daddy or your adult or your siblings for things to do. And this will help them um, feel very important. So um, I'm gonna give some examples of some things that you can do. So if you go online, you'll find a lot of resources on how to encourage independence in your children. So some activities uh, that you can um, introduce is things such as responsibility sticks or chore sticks. Um, now this is something um, that I've done at home as well. Um, it's great that you can incorporate it with the little ones as well as the older siblings. So what you would do is you would take a container, you can separate them so one of them can be for your older kids, the other one can be for your younger kids, and you can make it appropriate to their age. So this is just an example I've just decorated here with chores, and the kids can come home each day from school, or if they're the little ones that are home uh, with you during the day, and you can make it into a fun game and let them know that they can pick out a stick and help out mom or dad or the adults around the house. So here's some examples of some responsibilities that you can encourage their independence with. Um, and you can make it fun. These examples right here are for your older kids. So for example, uh, this one says, feed the cats, uh, empty dishwasher, make your bed, empty lunch bag. So of course these are for the older children who go to school and come home. You can encourage them to empty out their lunch bag uh, when they get home, put uh, the garbage where it's supposed to go, put the uh, Tupperwares or any Ziploc bags uh, into the appropriate uh, bin that they need to go into or the dishwasher. Now you don't always have to make these um, chores that may seem mundane or just seem like task that may be a little bit boring for kids, especially for the older kids, you can do fun things. So this is an example that I did. I put read to sissy, meaning read to your sister. So for your older kids that may be about five to six years old and up, you can encourage them to pick out a stick and it may say, read it to your sibling. And it's a great way for your older children to feel pride in helping out around the house by being a doing a nice gesture for their little brother or sister. And at the same time, um, your younger kids who are being read by their uh, older brother or sister are gonna feel um, so happy that they're getting this quality time with them. Um, you can also incorporate fun activities on these sticks so that your kids can look forward to it. So aside from just cleaning tasks or or, you know, um, helping with dishes. You can do things such as um, do five jumping jacks or um, 
uh, jump on one foot 10 times. So by mixing it up with your chores and responsibilities, um, it's going to add a lot of more excitement uh, for them to do it, especially for the older kids. So our last one here that I have for an example, it says water plants. I also find for the little kids, they enjoy that too. I mean, of course, um, there might be a little mess here and there by watering the plants and things like that. But by doing so, you're just encouraging um, them to gain more confidence in themselves and for them to feel um, proud pride in themselves that they're doing it. Uh, so here's some examples of responsibilities that you can add on to a responsibility stick uh, for the little ones. So this one here says straighten stuffies. And uh, another thing I wanted to point out is that of course your two to three year olds or your four year olds might not know how to read. But a great thing for you to do is to assist them with picking out a stick. So they get the joy of picking out the stick. And even if they can't read, uh, go through the letters with them. So this says straight and stuffies, and they might not be able to read that, but you can say, um, hmm, what letter is this? And you can see if they can identify the letters. So this is a great way to make it into a learning opportunity as well. So you can let them know that, hey, you know, um, your uh, responsibility stick says you have to straighten your stuffies that are on your bed. And then you can go through the letters. Look, I see an S and I see a T. What sound does the T make? T -t -t toy. So you're going to straighten your stuffies and you're gonna straighten your toys. So that's um, another way that you can use these sticks is that you're incorporating a learning opportunity and there's always ways for children to learn. Um, other examples are simple tasks such as cleaning your room, cleaning your toy bin. So some kids might have a playroom. Um, so even as early as two to three years old, you can encourage them to go into the playroom or go into their bedroom and do a quick cleanup. Some of our families who um, come to the center often when we're open, they often hear us singing the cleanup song. Uh, so you can definitely incorporate that into your home. I find that that's very helpful and it makes it fun for them. So uh, if you don't want to sing it, you can also uh, just Google up the song on YouTube or on Spotify um, and you can tell them, okay, I'm going to put on the song. Let's see how fast we can clean up our room or how fast we can clean up the living room in two minutes or let's see how fast we can clean up our room before the song ends. And then it just makes it um, a fun activity for them aside from just something that they're expected to do. Now, another simple task that your little ones can do is organize their books. So um, I wanted to point out that when you're encouraging independence with your little ones, especially your toddlers, you need to remember that you have to give grace um, and just um, throw perfection out the window. So when you say something as simple as, let's go clean out, um, clean up the stuffies in your room, you have to remember, of course, that you know their version of cleaning their stuffies might be throwing it across the room into the basket, while of course our, um, our idea of cleaning up uh, your stuffies in your room might be different. But just encouraging them to do the task is having them um, being able to learn and gain that independence. So another thing that I wanted to show you guys is that you can also do a quick lookup online. There are a lot of resources that you can find that can help you uh, to encourage your children in independence, especially when it comes to responsibilities and chores. And you can go ahead and print them out and you can also tweak it yourself. So I have a chart over here that I printed out from online. Now, um, I'll just explain a little bit. Um, these are age appropriate chores, so it goes by age. So if you uh, find these resources online, some of them have really great ideas of age appropriate chores and responsibilities to encourage independence in two to three year olds, four to six year olds, seven to 11 years old and up. So just like some of the uh, examples I show to you on our responsibility chore sticks, some examples that they write here for two to three year olds are putting laundry in the hamper. So this is also another fun activity that you can incorporate with your little ones, especially the toddlers that they can find fun. So you can say things such as, can you help mommy pick up all the socks on the floor and can we throw it in the bin? And of course, when they do that, praise them, let them know that that's a great thing and explain as to why you think that was a great thing. I really like the way that you took the towels 
and you put it into the bin just so that they can understand that this is the task that they're doing and it also helps build their confidence by helping them feel that they're really helping out mom or dad or grandma and grandpa or the adult in the home. So some examples on the chart uh, that uh, they talk about for four to six years old are taking care of the pets. So just like I had mentioned with our responsibility sticks, um, taking care of pets could be as simple as filling up the water bowl. Um, you can even start this really early with the toddlers. Of course, there might be little messes here and there, but just getting them to feel really important by being able to do that every day. So Emma knows that every morning when they go down to the kitchen, her job is to get the bowl and maybe if they of course can't reach the sink, they can give it to mom or dad or the adults of the house. Um, and that's their task to make sure that their little dog or cat is uh, being fed with water or food that day. Um, another thing you can do, and, and something that you might have seen in our early on, is that we try to incorporate a kid version um, objects that you would see in the house. So we have little ironing boards or little uh, brooms. Of course, we don't encourage ironing, of course, but we do have little brooms and little sweepers. So you can also um, encourage this in your house. And if you don't have the child size version, that's okay. Uh, you can just use, as long as it's um, safe and there's adult supervision, you can even give them um, the adult broom. And 99% uh, of the time they want to use the the adult version of um, the uh, household uh, util utility tool that you have. So a simple one and a great safe one is a broom. Um, you can also help them mimic you um, while you're doing it. So if you're uh, sweeping up around the house, you can give them a little dust a duster so then you can ask them to dust around the tables and uh, just kind of help them feel important. Uh, so Another thing that I would suggest is something as simple as having a little cleanup basket. Uh, so I find this very helpful for our kids that are between two to four years old. Um, so sometimes it might be as simple as not giving them a specific task, but let them have a helping basket. So when they see this, you can ask them, can you help mommy um, and pick up some things off the floor? And you don't have to be specific. Of course, if you're in the playroom or they're in their bedroom, um, just getting them to get the task to feel like they're helping you out. So if there are a few toys, if there are a few books, they can go ahead and take them off the floor and put them into the basket. Now, I find this a great uh, tool to use, especially when um, you're working with your little ones and you wanna encourage independence, but they might not yet understand like, put it into the hamper or you know put your uh, shirts in the drawer so giving them a helper basket will definitely give them a chance to help out but you're not having to worry about where the items are actually going so they can just go ahead and pick up the toys or books or you know even some of their clothes put it in the basket leave it there for mom or dad um, and then you can go ahead and get that but that is their little version of being able to help so with that, another thing I wanted to point out when you're encourage, encouraging independence with your children is that you also want to talk about um, your children's expectations within the home. So a great way to um, use this as an example is especially for our older children that attend school is to talk about how when you're in the classroom, you know, there are classroom expectations, um, there are rules, there are things that we have to follow such as tucking in our chair, washing our hands after we leave our desks. So when you're encouraging independence with your children, this is a great time to talk as a family about what your family expectations are and what your expectations are for your children when you're in the household and even as a community, in, in, within the community. So an example of this is talking about some behaviors that you're that they are expected uh, to be within the household. Um, and that could be something as simple as um, being nice to your little, to your brother or sister, 
or um, something such as sharing. So talk about why these are expectations. And um, while you're doing this, you are encouraging independence because it's just a task and it's a quality that they can learn and they can um, use it for their lifelong learning. So for example, if you're telling them, our expectation for our family is to share your things uh, with your brother and sister um, and share your things in general, they're learning these qualities and skills that they can take with them once they start school. Um, they'll know that they have to cooperate with their classmates and also share uh, with their uh, schoolmates uh, for anything that they're using within the school. Um, another thing is um, talking about expectations within the household. So when you're introducing things such as responsibility uh, sticks or helping baskets, you're encouraging independence because you want them to know that this is something that you, um, that they are expected to do, um, but it can also be a great and fun thing. So you can let your older kids know that, hey, when you come home from school, after we pick you up from the bus, you know, you need to remember to put your bags over by your cubbies in the front hall. And then after you've washed your hands and um, changed from your uniform, we're gonna pick a stick from our responsibility uh, bin or our chore bin. Um, so that in itself is encouraging independence uh, within your children. They're gonna know that they have to come home. There are certain tasks that they have to do, take off their shoes, put it by the mat, by the door, hang up their coats. And of course, for our little ones, you can help them um, help out their older siblings as well. So you can let them know, hey, you know, we have the backpacks. Where did the backpacks go? Can you help your older brother and put that into the laundry room? So simple things like that. So even though your little ones might be small, never underestimate what they are able to do because it's usually the small ones um, who we underestimate um, of things that they can do. It's so easy as parents and as adults to want to do it for them. That's totally understandable. I'm a mom myself and sometimes you know if you're in a rush or if you're um, wanting to get out the door you just want to hurry up and zip up that coat for them but as much as possible allow yourself grace allow yourself time and just remember that encouraging them to do these skills are just going to help them out in the long run and not only that it's going to help them feel proud it's going to help them feel confident like yay i did it it took me a couple of times but i zipped up my coat or i put on my own hats or i put on my own uh, excuse me, put on my own shoes. So that in itself is a great thing uh, when encouraging independence in your children. So I have some books that I wanted to um, share with you. Uh, there are an assortment of different books and in different areas of encouraging independence. So one topic that we will expand on on probably another Ask an ECE is um, learning independence when they're learning to potty train. Uh, so especially with your little toddlers, uh, three or four year olds who are learning how to potty train, a book that you want to that you might want to introduce your kids. Um, this one is a, a good one. It's called Even Superheroes use the potty and it's a fun book because not only is it a book that you can read to your children over and over as they're learning uh, potty training but in the back of the book it also comes with a chart uh, and it also comes with stickers so sometimes when you see potty training and you're encouraging independence for them to go on the potty by themselves sometimes there are things out there that you can do uh, charts but this book in itself comes with it with its own chart um, so that I think is a great bonus for your child so this would be in the area of encouraging independence when they are potty training now this book is called, is written by Sarah Crow and it's illustrated by Adam Record. And I also wanted to point out this series of books also have different um, areas of, uh, of things such as even superheroes have to sleep. So even when you're encouraging independence, maybe such as sleeping in their own bed or sleeping in their big girl or big boy bed, uh, this would be another series that you can look up with this author um, that teaches them uh, that to do things on their own and this also comes with its own sticker chart in the back So again, if you want to check out this book, it's written by Sarah Crow and it's illustrated by Adam record So another thing that you can bring up when it comes to encouraging independence is actually a really easy task especially with the certain um, 
circumstances that we're dealing with with the pandemic. So one thing that we're often saying to our kids is to wash your hands. Now I know sometimes we often have to repeat ourselves many, many times, even in the classrooms, if the kids are at schools, they have to learn to wash their hands ever so often. So a book that I would recommend, you can find it at your local library, or perhaps um, you can find it online or you might be already part of your library. Uh, this is called um, Germs Are Not For Sharing. Now this is a series uh, by Free Spirit Publishing. Um, and it's by Elizabeth Verdick and illustrated by Marika Henlein. And it's great because when you're encouraging uh, independence, you want to let them know why, uh, why do they have to wash their hands all the time. So aside from the circumstances that we may be dealing with right now during the pandemic, of course, teaching them about germs is a lifelong skill that they will learn as early as when they are toddlers. So this is a great book because uh, with the illustrations and with the storyline, they can get a better understanding of why germs are things that we want to stay away from and to um, constantly be cleaning our hands. And of course, it does teach a little bit of why germs can be good and why germs also um, can also help with building our immune systems. So this is just an overall um, good look at reasons as to why um, germs are something that they need to learn what to do with it we got to clean our hands when we touch surfaces we touch doors and that in itself again is encouraging independence so um when i brought up the topic about talking about expectations of as a family um so that goes with uh learning independence to know uh, how we want to treat our family members or how we want to act within our uh, within the household or even when we're out in the community and i thought this was a great book to share and it's called words are not for hurting and this is by elizabeth verdick and illustrated again by marika henlin and the reason why i thought this book was a great uh, example to use when encouraging independence is because um, when you're talking about expectations within the household, it's really, it's really easy uh, for kids to forget or even yourself to forget like, hey, you know, what is it that we expect while we're in the home to be respectful of each other, to share with one another, to cooperate with one another. So this is a great book to show different illustrations. Um, of them using their nice words with their family members and their friends. And I love the illustrations because kids can definitely identify with the feelings in here. And even sometimes with your little ones, you don't often have to, you know, read the whole book with the words. Sometimes the little ones, um, you know, their attention, it can't be, you know, their attention uh, can't be uh, going through the whole book. So you can definitely just go through the pictures and talk about, hey, what do I see here? And that could be you and your brother hugging each other and being nice to each other. So definitely uh, just working into the books with the pictures can also help. So that, my friends, is another session of Ask an ECE. I encourage you guys to leave any questions that you might have below or uh, send it to our email, which is at early on at ncdsb.com. As well, on Facebook, you can also send us a direct message. Um, we love getting these questions from you. And if you have any questions about anything that, we, uh, that I had talked about today, please let us know. I can send you a link to some of the resources online or some of the books, and we hope to see you again next Tuesday for Ask an ECE. Bye, and thank you very much.